Who doesn't like twinkling stars? Let's start with dragging in a fusion composition, set the duration to something like 30 seconds and then let's head over to the fusion page. Here we will add in a particle emitter and a particle render node. Let's display that in viewport 2 and let's get rid, well no, let's sort the transparency that looks just a bit better. In the emitter tab or the emitter node we're going to change the number to 2000 but it can be higher, it can be lower, whatever you want really. But we'll animate that and on the second frame we'll set it to zero so that we only have particles in the very first frame. And then let's set the lifespan to something suitable, something like a thousand frames. In the region we'll increase the sphere size to something like 10, we want to have a huge particle field or a star field. And the style we'll set to blob and for now we'll set the size to 0 0.03 but we'll change it later on in the P custom. We're uh, changing the color variance a bit, it's a very subtle effect, but it does make a bit of a difference. But you can of course go overboard as well, like I'm doing over here, or not. Uh, I'm changing then the alpha variance as well for reasons I won't go into, it's not hugely important though. So you can leave it if you want. Now let's get to the interesting stuff, uh, let's add in a P custom tool, that's where the magic will happen, nothing too fancy, I promise you. So let's define some variables, 0.98 for the inverse likelihood, 0.05 the twinkling speed, 0.4 minimum brightness and 0.03 the maximum size of the particle. So let's then head over to the particle tab and let's type in an expression for the alpha, if open brackets rend s open brackets 0, 0,1 comma id plus time close brackets that's the first bit so that basically means generate a value between 0 and 1 based on the particle id plus time so it changes every frame and if that is greater than n1 so in this case 0 0.98 uh, then basically set the particle value or sorry the alpha value to 1 so in other words, the higher that n1 value, 0 0.98 in this case, the less likely it is that the random function will produce something that is bigger than it. So it means then fewer, in fewer cases, a star will brighten up. So if it doesn't meet the condition, then comma, max, the maximum value of two values there, n3 and a minus n2. n3 constitutes the minimum brightness, so basically it will never go down below the minimum brightness. And the other bit is A minus N2. A representing the current alpha, N2 sort of the sparkling or twinkling speed. So the higher the N2 is, the faster it will go down to that minimum brightness value. And then we close it off with two brackets and we're done. Now when we play this, we don't actually see anything happening. That's because the alpha is not really properly sort of reflected in the normal uh, 3D viewer. That's why we're going to uh, add in a merge 3D node. And once we've added the 3D node, and let's display it over here in viewport one, let's add in a camera, a 3D camera, and let's pipe it in there, like so. And we set, oh, let's tidy it up a bit, and we'll set the second one to be the camera view. Then in the first one, I'll drag the camera out on the Z axis or Z axis, until I get something that is suitable for our purposes here, a view of the star field, because we'll animate it a bit later on. Then we add in the renderer node, set it to OpenGL, and also the transparency set it to accurate. And let's display that in viewport two, and let's get rid of that nasty underlay. And there we've got it, our view. And we when we play that, still nothing is happening. So what do we need to do now? As we can see here at the bottom of the screen, the alpha is there, but it's not being reflected. It's not really making it less bright or change over time. But when we add in an alpha multiply, as we're doing over here, bang, we've got our twinkling stars. Okay, so one more thing I wanna do, I wanna also alter the size. I want the size to move in tandem with the alpha. The greater the alpha, the larger the size. So N4 times A, N4 constituting the maximum size times alpha, one as a maximum. There we go. And when we play it back now, we see a more exaggerated effect because not only does it brighten up, it also gets larger. So all we need to do now really is animate the camera a bit. So let's go to the first uh, frame and let's set a keyframe and then let's move to the last one and uh, we'll actually display the merge 3D, it's a bit faster. 
And once we've done that, let's move the camera in the viewport a bit forward, like so. We're pushing the camera in a bit and that automatically sets that keyframe. And then there we have it. We've got our animation. So we're really nearly done now. However, there's one other optional thing. Sometimes there are some stars right in front of the camera lens. And if you want to remove those because they can become too big, you can make use of a P kill node. And bang, all particles are dead. That's not what we, what we want. Let's change the region mode to when inside region and set the region to mesh because we wanted the effect to be restricted. And uh, let's therefore define a shape 3D. And for now, we'll pipe it into the merge 3D just so that we see what we're doing. Uh, doesn't look very pretty. Pretty. Let's set the shape to cube. Untick the lock so that we can scale the dimensions separately, especially the depth. We want to increase that a bit because the camera is moving in. And I'm moving it a bit to the left and maybe increase the height a bit, a bit as well. And with and I think let's tweak it a bit more and then we should be there. And uh, all we then need to do is pipe in the shape 3D into the P kill and we can remove it from the merge. Well, that was only for a visual aid. And if we then sort of bypass the node and enable it again, you see that some particles were removed and that's what we want. They're not in our way. And again, it's optional. You may like the effect with or without. Uh, last thing I want to do is add a bit of soft glow and tweak it to your liking. Uh, I'm adding a bit of gain and maybe uh, altering the glow a bit, maybe zooming in a bit to see what we're doing. There we go. That is looking pretty good. Now, sometimes more is better. So let's go back to frame zero and change in the start. Oh, no, in the controls tab, let's change the number to 4000. Double it. Maybe even increase it more. No, let's not. And basically that is looking pretty darn good. So there's only one thing left to do. And yes, you guessed it. Pipe the soft glow back into the media out, head back into the edit tab, and we're done. Now you can render it out. Now, if you don't like it, if you want more particles, create more of them. If you want to have faster twinkling, change the parameter. If you want to have uh, more twinkling, again, change the parameter. And, you know, decrease that inverse likelihood. So um, there you have it, um, a simple tutorial. Hope you guys enjoyed it. See you guys next time. Take care, bye-bye.